we have a pretty good picture of what the atom looks like. This is thanks to a lot of different scientists who contributed to this understanding. There's a lot more than 10, but we're going to focus in today on what I believe are the top 10 scientists to contribute to our understanding of the atom. This list will go in order of discovery rather than order of importance. Here's the first one. Democritus was a philosopher that lived around 400 BC. He was the first person to actually use the word atom. And he described all matter as being composed up of tiny, indivisible particles that were indestructible. Our next scientist lived much later. John Dalton lived in the late 18th and early 19th century. He developed the atomic theory. The atomic theory states that all matter is composed up of atoms, that atoms cannot be created or destroyed, that the atoms of the same element are going to be identical to each other, chemical reactions occur when atoms rearrange, and finally, compounds are formed by the combination of elements in simple whole number ratios. Our third scientist is named J.J. Thompson. J.J. Thompson discovered the electron. He used an experimental apparatus called a cathode ray tube. This apparatus shot a beam of particles at a detecting stream. He was able to use magnets to prove that these particles were negatively charged. Our fourth scientist actually started his work with J.J. Thompson. Ernest Rutherford eventually started off on his own research, and he was responsible for discovering the proton. He used an experiment called the gold foil experiment, where he fired alpha particles at a very thin sheet of gold foil. Not only did he discover the proton, but he also found that atoms are mostly made up of empty space. Our next scientist discovered the neutron. James Chatwick actually worked under Rutherford. When Rutherford has suggested that there is another neutrally charged particle that's about the same size as the pro proton, Rutherford was unable to find supporting experimental evidence. James Chatwick was able to find evidence for this neutral particle in 1932, and he called this the neutron. The sixth scientist is named Niles Bohr. Bohr was a Danish scientist that discovered the Bohr model of the atom, which puts a dense nucleus at the center of the atom and the electrons orbiting around the nucleus, kind of like a solar system. He said that electrons could move up to higher or lower levels if they absorb or release the right amount of energy. This is a central idea in the concept of quantum mechanics. The next three scientists made significant contributions to a new model of the atom called the quantum mechanical model. Number seven is Werner Heisenberg. Heisenberg developed what is known as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which is a foundational principle in quantum mechanics. This principle states that the speed and the momentum of a tiny particle like an electron cannot be known at the same time. As you know the position of a particle more precisely, the speed of the particle will be less and less precisely known. This is important when it comes to atoms because since the electrons are so small and traveling so quickly, we can really not know exactly where they are. This brings us to scientist number eight. Number eight is Louis de Broglie. He was a French scientist who further developed the idea of quantum mechanics. He actually won a Nobel Prize for his idea called the de Broglie hypothesis, or in other words, the particle wave duality. This idea describes all matter as having the properties of both a wave and a particle. Large objects like a baseball are best described as a particle and have very little wave-like characteristics. Tiny particles like an electron are better described as a wave rather than a particle. The ninth scientist is named Erwin Schrodinger. Schrodinger made huge contributions to quantum mechanics by essentially taking the ideas of Bohr, Heisenberg, and de Broglie, and many others to create a new model for the atom. His model looks different from Bohr's model because the electrons are treated with some uncertainty and with a wave-like characteristics. If we treat electrons in this way, we can't really know where these electrons actually are, but we can know the probability of where they'll exist. Schrodinger developed an equation called a wave function. This equation would predict the probability of where electrons would be with certain energies. When these are graphed, the probabilities look like clouds. 
and so Schrodinger's model is sometimes called the electron cloud model. The final scientist in our list is named Glenn Seaborg. Glenn Seaborg is a very recent scientist who only died in, back in 1999. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1951 for discovering the transuranium elements. Elements from atomic number 1, hydrogen, to 92 uranium are found naturally, but starting with element number 93, neptunium, and upwards, we have the transuranium elements. These elements are synthetically produced by smashing atoms together in hopes that we will be able to combine them to form new larger atoms. Seaborg discovered 10 new elements, including californium, einsteinium, and even seaborgium. He paved the way in this field. And there you have the top 10 scientists that have contributed to our understanding of the atom.